Good morning guys, welcome to today's video. You guys can hardly see me. Welcome to today. We are in Gabby's car and we are all headed into town. Do you have your spelling? Oh shoot, I locked the door. Can you give Gabby the key? We are headed out to get something for Chino, something that hopefully is gonna change everything. And I wanna share it with you guys. We're not out there to try and teach anybody how to train or fix their horse, but this is something that's been so super important to us. Um, you guys know Chino has suffered off and on with really, uh, with moderately bad feet. His feet are okay. It's just that he gets tender on them sometimes. For the last year or so, I've been talking to this equine nutritionist and she has been able to teach us so many amazing things every step of the way and in the summer we mostly got Chino back to normal and he was doing so much better so then Chino had a bout of sore feet again this past summer you guys know we took up his shoes but in talking with this equine nutritionist I was able to learn something that I didn't know something that I suspected I was edging in on and trying to figure out uh, nutritional wise about what was happening with Chino and I'm gonna explain it to you guys today what she taught me and and how I think it has affected Chino in an adverse way. Also, I want you guys to know, none of our farriers and none of our vets can even ever see why Chino struggles with his feet at all. Like, his feet aren't overly bad. He's just sensitive about them. They, they're not super flat. They're a little tiny bit flat in certain areas. They're not super soft. They're like, a little tiny bit soft like people are our team has just been grasping at straws to try and figure out what has been wrong with him because there's no clear indication like oh yeah he's got flat feet that's what's wrong with him he needs shoes or oh yeah his feet are just so soft like he doesn't have anything concrete that is wrong with him he's just always sensitive with his feet and we make changes and it gets better but then something will happen and he'll get more sensitive again so I'm gonna explain to you a little bit further in this video what we think is going on and why it makes sense to us and what we're gonna do next these are adorable these treats the Starbucks one. yeah the Starbucks the hot dogs with ketchup and mustard the pumpkin spice adorable this is our second store that we've gone to we're looking for something specific and I'm not gonna find it I betcha I think I found it even Gabby came in today it's a hard brush and a soft brush yeah that is cool so for Christmas even Sam came in mini B. yeah so we are preparing to add our mini to our one, field eventually and so we are working on our fences to accommodate a younger a youngster one of these that's cool. For when I get plenty of bath, finally, when it's warmer. Yeah, she's... It's only $4.99. That's so super cool. I like it. So you don't have to use your hand. Yeah, I like it. It's rubber. My hand fits. Our whole family's in here. Oh, that's neat. It's like a cow head. What is that? What is that? What are those? Cow heads. That's I'm cool. Sure it's for roping to practice your roping. Yeah. Oh, that's neat. Honey's halter works perfectly for her, so we don't need a new one yet. But as she grows, we are gonna need something a little I bit bigger. Sophie always wants a new one. Yeah, we need a leather one for sure. But I think we should wait till she's an adult. It's only twenty-six dollars. I think we should wait until she's an adult. This will fit her perfectly. I know, but I think we should wait till she's full grown. All right, this this is a stuffed animal coin bank. Like a piggy bank, and it's a stuffed animal. It's so cute. Sophie and I have a love of cows, and sheep, and horses, and llamas. But we will never be getting a llama. And chickens. Hi, honey bear. Look how huge she's gotten. Like in a week. It's hard to show you guys unless I'm like down at her level, but she is big. You are a big girl. Some people have asked us about her halter and leaving her in it and how dangerous it can be, but we have we don't leave her in her halter. We would never, we just don't. It's not safe. It's really good that she has practice putting it on and off every single time that we do it. All the training that Sophie does with her right now is just like natural stuff that happens through the course of the day. Her walking her, her making her. It's so much cooler in here. Yeah, it's so much cooler in here. Anyway, she's doing great. Let's see if I can see how big she is. Like, she's big. I wanted to explain to you guys where our mindset is with Chino right now. So I told you I've been working with this new um, 
equine nutritionist who is amazing. I love her. She's the best woman. We've had some really long discussions where we've talked things through and I've explained, you know, what's happening with him and how there's nothing wrong with him. He just seems to struggle with his feet. He struggles to hold on shoes and he struggles with like um with being really sensitive in his feet and our vet and our farrier can never find any issue. When we bought Chino he was underweight and under muscled and we worked really hard to bring up his weight and to bring up his muscles and Gabby was really successful with that. One of the ways that we did that was we started him on grain, the same grain that all of our horses are on. Uh, we gave him a um, a light performance feed and then we gave him this grow and win which is like a balancer it's like a vitamin feed a lot of people give that to their horses so things went along well and he gained the weight and he gained the muscle but I kept on noticing these little teeny tiny things that made me think that there was something nutritionally wrong with Chino like he had this beautiful thick tail that Gabby was always bragging about and he still has an okay tail but it lost that lusciousness and he started to lose shoes and he started to get abscesses just this last year and where he had never really had abscesses before and so I talked about all these things with this new equine nutritionist and this is what we ended up on she can fit, <laughs> she can fit. you're the first pony well you're not the first pony but you're in the in the tack room <laughs> she's like yes yes i am <laughs> So she says that it's hard to know exactly what the issue is, but she says that Ontario is really well known to have high iron levels in their water. We absolutely have high, high iron le levels in the water in our barn. We know this and we have known this. What we didn't know was that high levels of iron can cause hoof weakness and hoof inflammation. She also said that when your iron levels get really high in a horse that it decreases your zinc and copper levels. Zinc and copper are two things that are really important in hoof health. In order to keep this completely brief, we talked for so long, but to keep this brief basically she's saying so horses get iron from the soil and from their water and from their and from any feed that they get so a horse that already is high in iron if you add more like vitamins and more iron it can just keep increasing the problem the more iron that's in his system the lower zinc and copper levels that are going to be in his system and we've seen so i looked up the symptoms of this and chino has almost all of the symptoms of having high iron levels and i was like wow like it's so difficult because so many people when you get a horse you start them on some kind of grain or some, start them on some kind of balancer or some kind of vitamin grain and that's what we did thinking we were doing the right thing but if a horse is getting too much iron then it's going to decrease their copper and their zinc levels and I think that that is what happened to Chino because there's no I've always felt and she has always felt that it's like a nutritional issue with him because there are no underlying things that our vet can find or that our farrier can find. So to fix this, what she suggests are two things. We can try it two different ways. We can keep him on the supplements that he's on or the feed that he's on and just add in a zinc copper supplement, which is where this comes into play. This is Mad Barnes Amino Trace and it's high in zinc and copper. And, and if he does actually have low levels of zinc and copper, this will fix that. So uh, that's one way we can fix it. Or we can decrease the iron levels in his diet and we are gonna do that. And I wanted to just say, what, so we're gonna do both. We're gonna support him with the vitamins that he needs while we decrease his iron levels. But I wanna touch on briefly what happened this past summer. So another reason that I think that that is the issue with Chino is not just that his tail is not as robust. It's not that his tail is not as thick and full as it used to be and his feet aren't as happy as they used to be. I was explaining to her like she was taking our whole history and I was explaining to her that he's never been a horse to have a lot of abscesses and then this summer he popped so many abscesses all in a row and she said like what did you change and I said he was started on beet pulp with his with his vitamins and she said beet pulp is really high in iron and it's something that she just found out herself that beet pulp is really high in iron so if you take a horse that already has too much iron in its system and then you add beet pulp which is high in iron then you could like push them over the edge they could start popping abscesses and having more problems with his feet before he was started on the beet pulp we had gotten him to a point through diet where we thought that he was in doing like so much better we had tweaked his diet with this nutritionist so that we that he was doing so much better and then all of a sudden he just took this turn and it was right at the time that he was started on beet pulp and so 
that is another reason why I think that there's an issue and it just is so crazy to think that you think you're doing the best thing you can for your horse because you're supporting them with the vitamins that they may not be having through a forage alone diet and yet sometimes it turns out that it's just too much. Everyone else is here looking brushed and there's mine. I brush it five times a day. Yeah, but she has curly hair. But anyways, that's the Chino story. She just pushed your tripod over. I don't know if you guys were interested in that, but I wanted to tell you guys where we're at and what we're trying. I have total faith that we're going to get backwards? him like completely back to normal. Horses are having their afternoon siesta. This is where they stand. So the second thing I wanted to touch on before we really get into this vlog, this vlog might just be me like explaining what we're, we're doing. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about Honey's age. Um, I've seen some comments where people think that she's between three and five months old and that she's too young to be taken from her mom. So the first thing I wanted to, to point out is that Honey is bum high. Do you guys see how bum high she is? You kind of have to see from the front. But she's very bum high. It can, be, it can depend on breeds and specific horses when a horse gets bum high, but bum high in a, in a foal only happens, never happens in a really young horse. They have to be above a certain age. Usually, usually it's around six months of age, between five and seven months of age, they start to get bum high. But when we bought her, she was definitely bum high and she is still bum high. And it's a really good way to tell how old a foal is. The second thing that I wanted to say is that most foals over six months of age will have like a lot, will start to change their tail. Like, you know how foals have those fluffy little tails? Well, a tail that's as long as honey's. Look how long her tail is. Almost always indicates, look at how long it is. It goes all the way down to here. Almost always indicates a, t a horse over six months. And then do you see these long hairs at the top? These long hairs that are turning into like her regular horse hair tail. Like her this. tail would be longer if it wasn't curled. Yeah, she has curly hair, but it is really long. Hey, so she takes after her owner. no young foal, three to five months, typically, it depends on the breed again, there are exceptions, but usually this doesn't happen in a foal under six months old. She's got these long hairs, coarser hairs that are coming in that that indicate that she is of an older age than three to five months. Also, let me see if I can see her eyes. See those dark patches around her eyes? That, so you guys know that when horses shed, when you have a shed your horse in the winter, they always shed on their bum and over their shoulders. Like the biggest part of their body sheds first, the part that has the most insulation. And the reason that happens is because when a horse starts to shed in early spring, um, they lose the fur over the parts that, that, that have the most insulation so that their body can still keep warm. The last parts of a horse to shed are typically bony areas or places that they don't have the most fat and insulation. So like around their eyes and on their legs. Having those dark spots around her eyes mean that she has shed around her eyes. So she's likely had her first full, full shed. When foals are young, they have like a lot of fuzzy hair around their eyes. So for her eyes to have already shed out indicates that the rest of her body has already shed out as well. Does that make sense? Also, I wanted to point out her teeth. She's not letting me show you, but usually weaning starts naturally in horses. Uh, when a foal's teeth are erupted by the time a horse has all her incisors like honey does, most mares will will have already stopped their foals from drinking all the time because they often will nip and bite when they're nursing. So naturally most horses, most, obviously all this is subject to breed and specific horses, but most of the time a horse will already start to wean when a horse's teeth are starting to erupt because just like for us, it can be uncomfortable. So for a horse, for honey to have all of her incisors, it's, um, very likely that her mare has already weaned her or was already in the process of weaning her before we bought her. I know it can be really confusing to see things online because in that video where we bought Honey, she looks so tiny. She's not a tiny mini. She's not a tiny mini foal. She is, at least to us, very clearly not too young to be away from her mom and she's, and she's not, and to us she's clearly not a tiny little baby. 
everything looks either smaller or bigger on the camera. Yeah, like she, if you put the camera down at her angle, you can see like she's turning into a horse. I also, she's, she's staying a pony. She, and she's a mini, so she's not gonna be like a giant horse and she's gonna look young and small. So uh, that is all that I have to say about Chino's feet and what we're doing for him and our opinion on how you can tell the age of a miniature horse foal based on all of those things. Um, we, you guys saw that we went on our trail ride yesterday with our friends and how Gracie did. And you guys know that we are uh, we reinforcing our field and getting things ready you for introducing. Gracie in her tongue. And introducing, no, yeah. So Sam is preparing the field to introduce, to, to introduce a mini to it. It's gonna take us a while. We won't be just throwing her out in a field full of horses. Uh, but he's getting ready, getting everything all set up. Right, Penny Pickle? And our mares are like, let me see what you're doing. <laughs> we sell and things are well. What facts belong, it's hard to say. Your pattern is so hard to tell. Don't you know that